Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Artisan Cutlery Tactic. Huge shout out to White Mountain Knives for loaning this to me. You can get a discount at that at whitemountainknives.com by using the code JT10. Jake, Jake's take 10. JT10 will get you 10% off anything in the store, not just this, literally anything they sell. They sell pens, they sell knives, they sell other outdoor gear. So if you're interested in this pen and you want to get it or something else, please, please use that discount code. That helps me out a little bit. And um, again, thank you to them for loaning me this pen. Let's go ahead and get into it. On to the size comparison. So at the bottom we have the Tactic, but then we have a Baron Fig Squire, and we have the Pilot Metropolitan. So you can see it's right in line with the Pilot Metropolitan. It is a little bit longer than the uh, Squire, of course, just because it's the Squire doesn't have a cap. It's a twist-out pen. But... Overall, it's very, very close to the Metropolitan. Here it is uncapped. You can see it retains a lot of the size from when it's capped. It caps very, very deeply. And it posts very deeply, too. We'll get to that in a bit. But you can see it absolutely dwarfs the Metropolitan. It comes up to about this, just a little bit past the nib of the Metropolitan. But if you're holding a fountain pen, you're going to grip more back here. With a, with a roller ball, you can grip up as far as you really want to. A little bit larger than the Baron Fig Squire, but not by too much. And here it is posted. It's very, very close to the Metropolitan in size when posted. The two pins overall are pretty similar, to be honest, um, when it comes to size. Again, dwarfs the Baron Fig. You can't post that pin. But I, I still really like the size of that one. And to be honest, I really don't post this too much when I use it just because of how large it gets. All right, on to what I like about it. First thing up is going to be the build quality, the fit and finish. This pen feels very, very sturdy, and it should. It's in that tactical pen category. And while I've never really messed with tactical pens, it's not really anything that I need, this feels very, very impressive. It's constructed out of solid titanium, and it, it is slightly heavy, but it's not that bad, honestly. It's, it's pretty well balanced, and that's partially because of all these cutouts. A very interesting design on this thing. The design's... It, it might be a little polarizing for some people. I honestly like it. It it looks it looks very unique. It's very, very eye-catching, which we'll come back to. But it's a very, very nice design. There's a lot of there's you know texturing here on the section, a lot of cutouts here. You can even see the refill that you have in there because of those cutouts. Again, just a, a lot of a lot of detail in this thing. It's it's very impressive. And even on the cap, just a, a lot of small details. The branding is very, very nice. They really only have the Artisan Cutlery logo, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's small. They have a very tiny little logo there that you can barely see, honestly, unless the lights were right on it. And they have their little symbol up here. No branding on the pen itself whatsoever, just the cap, which is a nice little touch. The clip on this pen is very, very nice as well. It's very, very thin very narrow and it carries fairly deeply just for example i'll bring out the uh, kaiser feist clip here so you can take a look and compare them this is a very very small knife clip this clip is even smaller than that and it really isn't all that long it's maybe two inches probably closer to an inch and three quarters to be honest I, i'm not sure i haven't measured it but it's it's a very interesting clip it's it's very thin, very narrow, and it has good ramp. I, I one of my favorite things about this pen, honestly, is this clip. This clip's amazing. I was really worried about it at first because of how thin it is and how narrow. I was I was very worried it would get stressed out and break, but it didn't. It held up very, very well, and it, it fits in all kinds of pockets, which is very, very nice. The section on this pen's pretty good as well. It's textured, you can see like the little rings here. It reminds me, honestly, of the Twisby 580 All-R, which is a, a newer model from Twisby. Very similar kind of thing. It feels very, very nice. It's not sharp because the pen appears to be um, you know, DLC coated and then stonewashed to give it, so you can see, like, the edges. Um, so it's it's rounded off very, very well. None of the threads are really all that sharp or anything either, but all of this is great. There's some extra texturing right down here so you don't slip forward. All in all, it feels very, very good in the hand. I really, really like this section a lot. One thing that I also like is the type of refill they went with. So they went with a Parker capless style refill. Now, what this means is there's a lot of compatibility when it comes to refill swapping. Um, roller balls 
are are a lot easier to find a variety of refills for than ballpoints in my opinion and the parker capless is a very nice system right now in there i have a monteverde ceramic gel um refill with it's orange because it's halloween so black and orange i thought it'd be pretty cool they do include a little o-ring to keep the spring on the refill as well so that's very very nice it actually comes with this here which is the smith uh, schmidt p900 this is like a hybrid um, roller ball ballpoint thing this refills very very nice it writes extremely well honestly i actually prefer it over the monteverde refill um, as far as writing um style but i like the color a lot of this one so any of these size refills which there are a ton of you can fit in here the baron fig squire uses the exact same style refill your retro 51 uses the exact same type of refill so there's the other pen that artisan uh I'm not artisan. Um, White Mountain Knives sent me the Finney Knives pen. Same style refill. Huge refill compatibility on these. You can find these in office supply stores. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them wherever. And there's a massive variety. You can you can get a ballpoint. You can get a rollerball. I have here, again, a ceramic gel refill, which is unique. Just a huge amount of variety on these. And it's, it's nice to have that choice, especially when it's going to be something that you're writing with, you know, potentially every day. It's nice to be able to find a refill that suits you and to be able to use it, you know, in this pen. You can swap them out whenever you want to. So I really like the refill choice here. It's honestly my favorite type of rollerball refill. And I, I that's that's just fantastic. Really, really enjoyed that. The size and weight are really good on this pen as well. It's it's not super duper heavy. Like I mentioned, it is titanium. But the size is just about perfect for me. Now, when I hold a rollerball pen, I don't hold it like a fountain pen just because the angle isn't necessarily suited for writing very well with a rollerball. I generally hold it something like this. So a little bit does stick up past my um, hand, but it's not, you know, super bad. When I want it posted, it's not quite as good. It does post very deeply. You can see the tip of the um, glass breaker comes up to out there. And it, it's still very, very writable. Um, I generally just prefer it unposted just because of the weight distribution's a lot more towards the middle when it's not posted, and I like that more. It's just personal preference kind of thing. Speaking of the glass breaker, it is here, it is prominent, and it is actually something that can break glass. If I'm correct, this is a carbide glass breaker, which means that you can cut glass with it. It's harder than glass is. So you can break glass with it very, very easily. It comes to a very, very sharp little point here. You can see it is a little sharp. It's not too bad though. To, to do anything with it, you have to really bear down and you know do it. But one thing that I really like is if you did have to break glass, this flat portion here is fantastic because what you can do is you can put your thumb there, I like to put the, the middle knuckle bone there, and then it gives you, you know, about two inches of clearance for you to hit the glass and break it. If you're ever in a situation where you have to break glass, I think this will serve you very, very well. They also market it as like a striking thing, but I, I've i never needed to poke anybody with a pen. But I don't know. I'm sure it's come up at some point in somebody's life. So that's that options there, I guess, if you really, really want it. It does have threads on the back for the cap to post. So it posts and screws on the exact same way, which is nice. The price on this is pretty good as well. So these are, they're not cheap, but they're not all that expensive either as far as pens go. So you know watching my channel, um, I have pens that are, you know, from... A couple of dollars to a couple hundred dollars um, I think the most expensive pen I've reviewed is the Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl which is very <laughs> very expensive um, it's it's about 500 bucks these are fairly cheap they're um, they're around 80 depending on where you get them so what they actually sorry about that um, what they actually come out to on the um, White Mountain Knives website, they have them a little cheaper. They have them for a little over 70 It's 73 dollars So 
that's that's a pretty good price for a titanium pen. But if you use that discount code that I mentioned in the intro, JT10, you're going to knock off a little over $7. That's going to bring it down to a little over 60 which is about you know, $20 cheaper than you find at other places. So that's nice. I was actually very surprised that he had it cheaper than other websites to begin with. So again, White Mountain Eyes. I'll leave it as a link down in the description of this exact product, and you can go to the website from there. But that really surprised me because a lot of titanium pens in general are fairly expensive. Titanium is a very expensive material to work with. And here, there's a lot of milling work. There is a ton of milling work. All these cutouts, all these grooves, all these hollows, that is machining time. And this is a decent sized pen. It's not small, it's not a pocket pen, it's a full size pen. And I would be interested to know how Artisan Cutlery was able to get it down to that price. But it's it's just inter interesting. There's a lot of detail here. There's like, like, okay, for example, that little scoop on the clip, there's actually cutouts on the clip again there. There's all of these different things, all the edges are rounded. It's, for the amount of detail they put in here, the price is fantastic. It's great. I really, really would like to know how they get all that in there. And if I could find a titanium fountain pen for this price, I would lose my mind. Even for $100 with all this detail, that'd be crazy. To be honest, a fountain pen with all this detail um, from another company, I'm assuming it would run probably two or three hundred, if not higher, probably closer to five or six, depending on what brand did it. This is this is great. If you want something that's very unique, very interesting, and very, very nice, made out of nice material, this is a pretty good choice, honestly. Alright, on to the neutral. So there's really only one thing here. And that is that when you post this pen, it, it bounces a little far back for me. So I'm going to try to show you the, the balance here. It's right in the middle. Fantastic balance on this pen. They did a great job with that. When you post it, though, it comes back quite a bit. Now, it's still kind of towards the middle of the pen in general with it posted, but I, I would prefer it to be maybe somewhere up here rather than kind of back here on this little groove. It's not bad, and it really depends on how far back you hold your pen. I hold my rollerballs fairly close to the um, the writing point, maybe, you know, three-fourths of an inch back, if that, and then I write. If you hold it, you know, back here somewhere, it might be a little bit better for you. But if you hold it really, really close to the point, this is going to be catastrophic because this pen, when posted, is fairly long. It's not huge, but it's fairly long. I vastly prefer the unposted size. I kind of wish they had worked on the posting weight a little bit. But to be honest, I don't know if they could have just because this cap is hollowed out so much. It's crazy already. They've, they've done complete cutouts and it, it posts so deeply. It's ridiculous. Like it, it, it posts extremely, extremely deeply. I, I don't know how they could have fixed the weight at all any better. And it's not bad, which is why it's not in the dislike section. But it's, it's there. It's present. I'm not a huge fan of the balance. I prefer it unposted. But again, that's really just a preference thing. So it's gonna come down to whatever you're wanting, you know, to have your pen balanced. It depends on where you want it to sit in your hand. On to the dislike. Two things here. Um, I'll save the big one for last. So first up, this design just draws attention. And to be honest, for a tactical pen, I don't know why you'd wanna do that, if that makes any sense. If you're going to be carrying this as some sort of weird self-defense weapon, you would want a more minimal design, something a bit less eye-catching. And while it's not a super bright color or anything, the design itself is extremely, extremely eye-catching. If you saw this sitting on a table, you're gonna be like, oh, that's a that's a different pen. You can see the refill in there, and you can see all these cutouts and all these grooves and all of this, and it tapers down to this weird point it's going to attract a lot of attention. Granted, I'm sure it serves its purpose extremely, extremely well, but the design's just eye-catching. It's just there. It attracts attention. It's it's really, really cool. I like the design of it, but I kind of wish they had removed the tactical aspect because, to be honest, if you're going for, for a tactical pen, I 
would assume you'd want something a bit more subtle. Okay, the thing I dislike the most about this pen is extremely annoying. And I don't know what they did, but it, it really pisses me off. So I, I've tried, I've found a slight workaround. I've tried to been doing that during this review. But when you go to cap this pen, now whether that's on the back or to post it, the threads get cross-threaded quite frequently. Now you can see there, it's crooked. Why? Because it's cross-threaded and I can't push it any farther. So you can sit there and try to twist it off and get it down. Now, when you go to cap it, nine times out of 10, it's gonna lock up like that every time. It's very, very frustrating. I have found a workaround for it, but I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to find a workaround. It should cap, it's a pen. Capping and uncapping a pen is extremely common. It should cap properly. What you'll wanna do if you if you are interested in this, in this pen is push down and then close it when you apply a little downward force, it goes right on. Um, it's not quite as reliable using a technique on the back, but it still works. Um, on the back, same thing. It just, you know, the threading is just off. I think it's the threading on the inside of the cap, to be honest. That's extremely frustrating, though. When I'm trying to uncap this pen, it's fine. When I try to put the cap back on or post it, it's infuriating, and it really, really pisses me off. That is by far the worst thing about this pen. And it's, it's not a deal breaker, but it's it's damn close. There there should be no issues with capping a pen. That's that's just ridiculous in my opinion. I think that's almost unforgivable. If the price weren't so good, that would it'd be a complete deal breaker. To be honest though, that's enough to make me not use this pen as often as I should. I will I'll save that for the conclusion. All right, on to the writing sample. There you go. Writes very well. A little sharp, um, almost um, scratchy writing. Um, no, all joking aside, um, I did want to kind of show that off to show that it can indeed cut glass. So that, that's very interesting. Let's go ahead and these stupid threads. There we go. Now this is the default refill that comes with this pen. It's the Schmidt P900. I'll also show the refill that I'm currently using in it just to show you some variants that you can get with this. So this is the Artisan Cutlery Tactic. This is a very, very smooth refill. Very, very sh smooth. I almost said smooth, like Schmidt. It's, it's, it is smooth as well. Schmidt P900. And it's it's kind of, color-wise, it's, it's like your typical ballpoint refill. Nothing special, nothing crazy, but it is exceptionally smooth which is something that I really like. I wasn't sure I'd like this refill too much since uh, I generally prefer strictly rollerball refills, but this one's very, very, very nice. And I'll show you here how to uh, change out the refills real quick as well, just because I want to show you that um, ceramic gel refill. So to get this off, you just lift it up and pull. I try to keep them together, but if you want to separate the O-ring and the spring and put them on separately, you can. Um, I do this generally just to save time and so I don't lose that little O-ring. Because that would not be good. All right, I'll show you this one here. Now, this is a uh, Monteverde. They do make fountain pens as well, so if you know anything about them, you'll know that you know they make decent pens. I've I've tried um for a long period of time the I'm trying to remember the name of it. I'm not sure. Monza, the Monteverde Monza. And um, in case you're curious, this is a gel ink. 
This one is extremely bright. I love the color on this. It's not as smooth as this Schmidt refill because of how fine it is, but it's it, it's very, very, very nice. I like it quite a bit. The color is so bright. Really, really, really bright um, writing color on that, and I really, really enjoy that refill. All right, on to the conclusion. So overall, I really, really like this pen. There are a few things that, if it were up to me, I would take off. Honestly, this would be a perfect pen, in my opinion, if they got rid of the glass breaker and did something a bit more traditional back here. Maybe just cut it off to like here or here, to be honest, and, you know, did something else with that part. I really don't need the glass breaker. I wish they'd offer an option without the glass breaker. But it's kind of the EDC community. They love that stuff. So, you know, I understand why they chose that. But if it didn't have that and if the capping issue where the threads were fixed, I would love this thing. It's amazing. I love the design. It's gorgeous. The refill compatibility is amazing. You can get it right literally however you want to. The clip is awesome. It carries super, super well. Steals up really good. I love that you can see the refill through here. It's just interesting. It's a very unique pen, and I really, really like it. I do. I really, really enjoy this pen, but the glass breaker and the threading thing, it, it kind of puts it off for me, and I find myself reaching for this pen less and less as time goes by. That's just me. If you have any use for a glass breaker or a uh, striking pen for god knows what reason this might be right up your alley you may be able to fix the threading issue um i'm not sure i i can't see any obvious errors with the threading it's just something that happens again if you press down you can kind of get rid of it so i've i've mostly alleviated it but it's just frustrating granted it's not super expensive like i mentioned with a coupon code you can pick it up for like 65 dollars or something like that that's really, really good for an all titanium pen with this kind of machining and that refill compatibility. But the glass breaker and the threading thing just kind of puts me off of it personally. The glass breaker is not a bad thing, though. It's a very functional, very good glass breaker. So it's really going to come down to what you're looking for. If you are just looking for a reliable rollerball or ballpoint pen to supplement a fountain pen or maybe that you only use these types of pens, this is a good choice. I'm not going to lie, this is a really, really good choice when it comes to writing and use. But those things that I'm not using every day would stop me from buying it. I don't use that glass breaker. I, I'm not going to hit somebody with a pen. I don't need that entire back half of that pen. So from here up, it's awesome. But that kind of puts me off of it, and I really wish they would offer a model without that. But that's just me. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Again, a huge shout out to White Mountain Knives for loaning me this. Thank you very, very much, guys. That's awesome of you. And again, if you'd like to help me out a little bit on the channel, I don't get any money for it, but you know it might convince them to loan me some more stuff. You can use that coupon code JT10 to save on anything on their website, anything at all. Again, I'll leave a link down in the description. And thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye, guys.